Hi guys, it's Monica. Um, go away. Uh, let's see. So this is, I got this working, and I just wanted to show you guys that I got it working. This is the player start. This is a random AI. I gave him the skeletal mesh, and he has animation because I did a top-down project, and it comes with that. This thing here that you see, this this green thing, if I, tur if I press P, it turns it on and off. You can find that in volume. That's a nav mesh bounds volume that basically tells the AI where it can go. And it sets up these corner things like all automatically. So it goes around things that are not included within the mesh. So if I click on the mesh itself, I can like change it so that it can walk on top of all the things or not, which is what I'm going to stick with. We're not going to do that. So um, with this, what I did was for the blueprinting, I came over here. Uh, this is the blueprints that I worked on. Really annoying. As you can see, they're all commented. So this right here, so this is an event that I've got going on right here called basic task. And you can see it right here. Um, this right here, event receive execute. This means uh, when the event is, bleh, when it begins to get executed. So the owner actor, this is whatever actor has this event on it. So in this case, my little random AI dude. I drag that connection to get actor location because I'm going to, I'll talk about this one in a second. Um, I need the actor location. Like I need to know where the actor is at the moment. We're going to drag that value to origin from get random point and radius. This radius is going to be like the, basically where he's going to move, where my little dude's going to move. So I made the radius 2000 because anything smaller and he's not going to move. I'll show you what I mean later. Hopefully if I remember. Um, whatever, so this random point, it's going to return a value, which is a, of type, um, vector. So I created a destination over here and it is a blackboard variable. So if I, uh, I created a variable, sorry, it is a variable of type. And if we just type up here, blackboard key selector, and that's because over, not up here. Over on the AI blackboard, which apparently is this. It's not. Okay, there we go. So here's the blackboard. <coughs> uh, I have two of these. I, I, I uh, this one, ignore this one. It's, it's not a thing. It's just because I created over something over here. Okay. This is target point. Uh, I created this in here. See, new key. This is the blackboard. Blackboard holds values based on type. So this is a vector type, which means it'll hold a location. And that's what this is going to, oh, I did a thing. I did a bad thing. I was afraid I was, there we go. It's there. Ah, uh, no, no error. What are you doing? No, nothing's wrong. Okay. So, <laughs> control Z is your friend. So, uh, here's destination, which was a ver that variable that I created of blackboard key type. And I plugged that into key for set blackboard value as vector. If you need to find these things, you can always right click and type in all actions for this blueprint. So you can type in the search. If you can't find it, I would suggest turning off context sensitive because context sensitive can sometimes block out things. It's handy, but not that handy. So and then I connected this to finish execute only when it's a success. This is extremely important right here. If it's a successful run, then it will finish the execute. If not, then it'll run it again until it is a successful uh, execute. I also connected event receive execute to set blackboard value as vector. Um, otherwise, it's not going to happen. So it's going to do all of this automatically and run to this, but it's not going to set it as a vector unless I have that connected. I learned that the hard way. That was literally like an hour trying to figure out what I was missing was this right here. So that is basically the most important part. The next important part was coming over into basic AI control. I had to create these four blueprints in order to make a working AI. Let me compile that. This basic AI controller, I had to go over here into blueprint, create blueprint, and then you have to type in, so let me come over here. You type in AI controller, and there it is right there. And that's how you find it. And then if you want to create, no. If you want to create the other ones that I made, I went into here and I created a character blueprint. That's this one right here, if you see my wildly circulating mouse. Um, and then to create a uh, blackboard, it's right here. And to create a behavior tree, it is right here. And that's to create these two. So if I come over here, we come over to the behavior tree. That's right here. 
uh, excuse me, I forget to explain this. So this is e uh, event begin play, and that's when the event is called. This is on the controller. This is important because this is what you're going to attach over here. This is to run this lovely little behavior tree over here that I will explain in a minute. You have to set BTA or BT asset to basic behavior tree, which is this thing right here. And what this is, this is the root. This is where this behavior, all of that crazy behavior is going to start. This is the root, like the root of all, it's like a tree. Then I made a sequence because we're going to run a sequence of things. It makes sense if you think about it. We have a sequence here. Here's the numbers, the little things glowing red. This is a child index. So this is the order in which they will run. You have zero, which is a basic task, which is the name of this program right here, which you create by pulling down on this. You can look at tasks, and here's my created task. Oh, I I forgot. That is a thing. Um, that I had to type in BTT. Uh, BT task blueprint base. It's this one. Ah, uh, lovely. It's, it's glitching. But yeah, that's, that's BT task. That's this thing right here. This was making a task. And that's what this is. It's a basic task. And its destination is target point. That's what's going to be set there, is that target point. Which is this. So destination is being set to this right here. Also, I need to get rid of that because I don't need that. So... Now that I have that, it's running the task, which I created over here, the task that tells it to find a variable. It didn't, that, this task right here does not say to move to a variable. There's no error. Just need to compile it again. Um, this is just telling it to find a, a random point within a radius of 2,000, which is a pretty big radius, but we're in a pretty big area. Um, if it was any smaller number, he wouldn't actually move in any way that you would notice. So now I need to make a move. So I have this right here, which I found by going like this, tasks, move to. And he's going to move to the target point, which was assigned right here. Then I dragged it again. And this one was not part of the tutorial, but if you don't do this, then he just kind of constantly moves. And you want him to wait. So I have a wait here. I have it waiting for two seconds. It is going to do this before it does this. Um... Because, yeah, because that's the way the, the hierarchy works. So when I run this, it's, it's not going to move right away. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile everything, make sure all is good in the hood. All right, good. Excellent. So there you go. There's all of the blueprints that I did. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, of course, ask me. I don't bite. Um, if I play this, here I am, and there he goes, and he's going to wait two seconds and run off. And there he stands. And he's going to run back and stand there. And then he's going to run somewhere else. And we're going to follow him because we can. And there we go. Also, I forgot to mention. Ah, let's pull that back up. In move to, I put the acceptable radius 50. You could, This one you want small. If this one is 2,000, I mean, like again, he's hardly going to move. It's, it's, it's strange. Let me show you what I mean. So if I set this to, like, 50, like the other one, let's do that. Now, I'm going to move this off to the side. Let's play. He doesn't move. Because the radius needs to be a lot bigger. This area is huge. It needs to be a big radius. If it's 50, he's not moving. Because the radius is just 50. It's just like right here. Stop. So, you need to make sure that this is something big. I just put 2,000 because that was an example. The thing I was reading said. And I was like, sure, why not? That sounds like it'll work. Or blow things up. This is 50 because this is basically like the correctional. Like how close, how absolutely on the point does he need to be? I mean, you can make this like 10 if you really wanted him to absolutely go to that spot. The smaller it is, the more precise it's going to be. I don't think you want to go below 10. At least that's what I understand it to be. Or save because I, I save a lot. You always want to save. Okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to show is the fact that there's this thing in here over to the side. Let's see if I can find it quickly, because I can never find it. Oh, okay. This, right here. Orient uh, rotation to movement. That's what that says. Let me move this. Orient rotation to movement. This right here. Mm -hmm. It's in the, the character movement. You kind of scroll to the bottom, and it says orient rotation to movement. You want that checked, because that's going to orient his rotation while he's moving to which whichever way, like, the controller... Ah, excuse me, whichever way he is moving. You also want to scroll down further and turn off use controller rotation, y'all, because it's, uh, that's only, like, 
that he's going to match whatever way your controller is facing, the player controller, this thing right here. So we don't want that. So we want that to be turned off for this AI dude. Okay, so I think that covers pretty much every... How, how is that 10 minutes? Goodness gracious, I thought this would be quick. I think that's everything. If there was something you didn't understand, please post like a comment or something. If I, uh, I want to try and put the the alien into this, but I was just trying to get this to happen really quick, and I just wanted to jump in here and use something really simple, like this really simple animation and this really simple character, and it ended up being a lot longer than I meant it to be. So I just jumped in and grabbed something simple. <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna try and make it react to stimuli, or stimulus and sound. So that's my next step. Okay. Uh, which is a thing in Blueprint. That's a built-in thing. Um, whatever, I'll talk about it later. Alright, so, uh, hope this was helpful. Bye.